Welcome to SOS Media, your number one source of the latest news, opinions, and in-depth investigations that dig deeper into today's developing stories around the globe. Throughout his legal troubles, R. Kelly has experienced quite a number of injustices that he has found very difficult to comprehend. They also seem to be very outrageous and don't make sense both to him and us who look at his legal developments with an unbiased mind. In one of his recent revelations, R. Kelly has highlighted a few New York trial setups that still leave him puzzled to date even as we get It's true that we have never been convinced as to why R. Kelly's 2008 state case turned federal after being brought back a whole 13 years later. Steve Greenberg, R. Kelly's lawyer then argued that it shouldn't have happened that way simply because it was equivalent to a double jeopardy. The double jeopardy clause provides that no person can be convicted twice of the same offense. However, the effectiveness of the clause depends on whether two separate offenses can be considered to be the same offense. The state unlawfully and unjustly twisted R. Kelly's offense from calling it bribery to calling it intimidation after a whole 13 years. The initial argument was that R. Kelly had bribed the alleged girl on the tape and her family to deny the allegation that she was the one in the recording. R. Kelly actually from the very beginning told court that these allegations were not true but I believe this is what the prosecutors didn't want to hear. Now, let us assume a situation where this argument was true. It would then definitely mean that the alleged girl's mother, father and all the other close relatives received money from R. Kelly to allow him get involved with an underage girl, something we would all find very outrageous. We should also presume a situation where the alleged girl's parents and relatives confessed to receiving money from R. Kelly in exchange for involvement with a minor. Would they then be free from being penalized by the law? I believe the jury would then definitely have to prosecute them. One therefore would be right to come to a conclusion that R. Kelly did not bribe the alleged girl or her parents. This simply was not true at all. A couple of weeks later after realizing this approach had glitches, the prosecution changed their story from accusing R. Kelly of bribery to accusing him of intimidation, 15 years later. This change of story will forever remain questionable. We however believe that the change was necessitated by the fact that the prosecutors after realizing how terrible it would look if they had put their alleged girl and her family, especially her mother and father to the stand to confess to the whole world how they had pimped their daughter. Even after the change from bribery to intimidation, the prosecution failed to provide evidence to support this claim. It doesn't require one to be a genius to see that the allegation of intimidation here is out of context because even after the allegations of intimidation, the alleged girl and her family stayed around R. Kelly. They kept on living at his house, attending his shows in and out of town and celebrating moments like Christmas and birthdays together. Actually in 2016 long after the 2008 bribery accusations, R. Kelly would still go with the alleged girl's family to watch her uncle's band play at various clubs, including at the downtown Hard Rock Cafe just as a family. In 2018, the alleged girl's family also attended R. Kelly's birthday party at his studio on 219 North Justine Street. Remember that this was the time that the surviving R. Kelly docuseries were circulating all over the world and on social media. The alleged girl's family knew that these allegations were not true and were thus not bothered with the circulating rumors. The family hanged around with R. Kelly at cigar bars and elsewhere not until her got arrested. A month before R. Kelly's arrest, the alleged girl had sent a text message requesting him to check on her at a studio where she was working. The question then remains as to why the alleged girl and her family still hanged out, partied and had fun with R. Kelly all way from 2008 to 2018 if indeed he was intimidating them. There is completely no sign to suggest intimidation. The family of the alleged has never even bothered to change residence, a common practice of people receiving threats. The family still lives where it lived even before R. Kelly become part of their social life. When you threaten someone and intimidate them you're basically saying you're going to hurt them or even kill them if they don't do what you want them to do, and I don't think anyone can keep hanging up close to you for that long in such a situation. The alleged girl's family kept on visiting R. Kelly at his home in Olympic fields during the six years he was attending court, at times sleeping over. Her father also contributed and played along to some of R. Kelly's songs as a guitarist during the six-year court period. Of the other things that really don't add up is the allegation that R. Kelly took the alleged girl to a boarding school so that they couldn't find her for a court testimony. 
This sounds very unrealistic since we actually know that it's easier to get on to someone who is in an institution like a school, than someone you can't predict their whereabouts at any particular point in time. The truth remains that at this particular time when the prosecutors made this allegation, the alleged girl was working at daycare center just three blocks from R. Kelly's house, where her mother and father were regular visitors. After R. Kelly's acquittal in 2008, he was able to carry out several tours most of which were attended by the alleged girl and her parents and at time by her other relatives. R. Kelly would provide them with tickets and book them hotel rooms. It was also common for them to ride with him in his tour bus to the after party often organized at his home, his studio or club. Revelation from Steve Greenberg who was R. Kelly's lawyer when he got arrested by the Fed says, the case became federal because the prosecutors claimed to have found a video recorded in the alley of the back of R. Kelly's studio on 219 North Justice Street. This claim is also clearly unrealistic given the fact that there were three buildings connected to that that housed R. Kelly's studio and the alley behind them had three big garbage dumps meaning that if they did get a camcorder there as they allege, then it was from the garbage bins and anyone could have dumped it there. One also wonders why they didn't carry out fingerprint analysis on the said camcorder. If indeed the prosecutors insisted that they found the alleged tape in a camcorder behind R. Kelly's studio, they would have retained the camera too for further investigations. By the fact that they did throw it away leaves much to be doubted. With this information at hand, anyone can really conclude that this was a hoax and that the prosecutors lied that they had retrieved the camera from the back of R. Kelly's studio, in the alley where those garbage bins were placed. It's also very unfortunate that R. Kelly couldn't access his legal notes that he had compiled over a period of two years when he was at the Chicago Metropolitan Correctional Center. He had compiled these notes for sharing with his lawyers during the New York trial but unfortunately, they weren't allowed on the plane. He was then promised to get them a day later but this did not materialize till the trial came to an end. He eventually received the disorganized and distorted notes weeks after being declared guilty. He was denied the opportunity to share his notes with his attorneys. That's how unjust the system has been to him. And closer. It now remains our wish that he and his legal team led by the unrelenting attorney Jennifer Bonjean find an opportunity to challenge all these injustices, misinterpretations of the law and lies from the alleged victims which have marred the R. Kelly's legal battles from inception to date. For us who believe in fairness and justice for everyone are watching the appeal process closely. All that we hope for is for the total reversal of all R. Kelly's sentences. We stay optimistic that R. Kelly will walk home a free man sooner than later. Thank you for watching today's video brought to you by SOS Media. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you never miss any of our videos. Also remember to leave your comment about today's topic in the comment section below.